Hello everybody, in this video today I'm going to be talking about when you should consider PANS or PANDAS. Now, PANS and PANDAS are neuroimmune conditions which can cause obsessive compulsive disorder, tics and restrictive eating disorders. The conditions are estimated to affect around 1 in 200 people, but the conditions are almost always misdiagnosed due to a lack of awareness. Number 1. You should consider PANS or PANDAS if your OCD eating disorder or tics had a sudden onset. So PANS and PANDAS can sometimes be overnight. So a person may go to bed and then wake up the next day not really recognising themselves anymore and being severely disabled by these symptoms. The tics can be very, very dramatic and a sudden onset of tics would be suddenly just developing very, very, very severe tics and... This can happen in Tourette's as well with the tics, but it could also be pans or pandas. Typical OCD is not supposed to come on overnight, but pans pandas can. However, it is still possible to have pans pandas without having a sudden onset. Some people have a subacute onset where they have a little bit of a gradual buildup of symptoms or mi a micro flare beforehand, and then it explodes, and then a person displays the symptoms that can be identified as pans or pandas. Number two, you have symptoms which are not typically associated with things like classic OCD or Tourette syndrome or classic eating disorders. This may include seizures, loss of coordination, urinary incontinence, joint pain, developmental and behavioural regression, a decline in handwriting and maths ability, brain fog, personality changes, etc. There are certain things that don't typically occur in Tourette's OCD and eating disorders that can occur as part of PANS and PANDAS. And also severe separation anxiety is very common in PANS and PANDAS as well. Number three, you do not respond well to psychotropic medications like antidepressants or antipsychotics. Now, some people with PANS and PANDAS do respond really well to these, but that's a small percentage. Most people with PANS and PANDAS report that they don't respond well to these medications that typically are used for OCD and tics. This is one reason why getting the correct diagnosis is really, really important. People with PANS may also tolerate lower doses of these medications. So if they're on a higher dose, they may have quite bad side effects. For those who do respond to these medications, it can address the OCD and tics, but then people may still be dealing with the other symptoms like the behavioural regression or the seizures, etc. So it may not address all symptoms. Number four. The symptoms get worse or explode when you have an infection. Pans and pandas are commonly triggered by infections. Pandas is specifically triggered by streptococcal infections. I must say though that streptococcal infections is a lot more than just strep throat. You can get perianal strep, intranasal strep, scarlet fever and strep in the gastrointestinal tract. Pans can be caused by infections like Lyme disease and co-infections like Bartonella. It can also be caused by the flu, it can also be caused by chickenpox, the common cold, and many, many, many other infections. And it is also possible to have non-infectious triggers, like mould exposure or metabolic issues, but it is often infection triggered. People often see that their symptoms get worse with an infection, and it may not be every infection, but there are certain infections that may make the person completely explode and develop a ton of neuropsychiatric symptoms and go into a massive flare quite suddenly. So if you experience a sudden worsening of symptoms or sudden development of new symptoms when you have an infection, it could be worth looking into PANS or PANDAS. Number five, your symptoms dramatically change over time or you suddenly develop new symptoms. This is because, as I said, people can have flares specifically when they have an infection, but these flares can cause you to develop a ton of new symptoms suddenly and for example if you had a flare at a young age and had OCD, sensory processing issues, tics and hyperactivity you may then have a flare when you're older where you develop an eating disorder, seizures, loss of coordination, have a return of OCD or your OCD gets a lot worse stuff like that. It can change a lot over time and people may sort of get a bit of a collection of symptoms over time. Either they may pile on top of each other or people may have already recovered from the previous flares but then now go into a new one with a whole bunch of new struggles to deal with. Because with typical tic disorders like Tourette syndrome, you aren't supposed to just develop suddenly loss of coordination, loss of sensation, hallucinations, that's not supposed to happen. 
and your symptoms aren't supposed to dramatically change like when you're younger you have tics but when you're older it evolves into an eating disorder and severe depression it's not supposed to evolve like that i mean it, people with threats do often have co-occurring conditions but if the symptoms just evolve and change so dramatically or if you develop a bunch of symptoms that aren't typically associated then you should really consider pans or pandas number six your symptoms reduce when you take antibiotics antibiotics treat infections but are also used for pans and pandas and this can be to get rid of the triggering infection or sometimes to prevent someone from getting another infection in severe cases. Some people with pans pandas are on long-term antibiotics because they reduce the person's symptoms, the neuropsychiatric symptoms. People with pans and pandas can respond to antibiotics very, very, very quickly within maybe 24 to 48 hours, though this isn't always the case. Some people do find that it takes it a little bit longer for it to start working. Other people may not respond well to antibiotics, but may need another intervention like intravenous immunoglobulin or steroids or anti-inflammatories. It depends on the person. But if you see an improvement in neuropsychiatric symptoms such as tics or OCD with antibiotics, then it's definitely worth considering pans or pandas because that could be a big indicator that that could be what's going on. Number seven. Your onset occurred at an atypical age. For example, people with ADHD usually have it like their whole life. It's noticeable from a young age. The same with autism. It's usually noticeable when a person's very young. But if someone develops autistic traits or ADHD traits along with things like tics or OCD in late childhood, in teenage years or adulthood, then it could be pans or pandas. A teenager is not supposed to suddenly develop autistic traits or hyperactivity. Number eight, you know that you had an infection shortly before the neuropsychiatric symptoms started. Because pans and pandas are often triggered by infections, if you record having an infection beforehand, like mycoplasma or being bitten by a tick or having a sore throat, then that could be what caused the neuropsychiatric symptoms because of the autoimmune attack on the brain. But definitely remember that it's not always an infection that triggers it and it is also a lot more than strep. So Testing for strep and getting a negative result doesn't mean you don't have pans because so many other things can cause pans and it's possible potentially that the infection had already been wiped out and isn't being detected by the tests, but it may still have been the original trigger. It is also possible for infections to be asymptomatic. So someone may not have known that they had an infection when the symptoms started. So even if you don't remember having an infection, but remember having a very sudden onset and relate to a lot of these other traits, then it is 100% still worth considering pans or pandas. The sad thing is about pans and pandas is that the conditions are highly misunderstood. People are often misdiagnosed with conditions such as Tourette syndrome, functional neurological disorder, autism, ADHD, classic OCD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and much more. But this is a problem because it prevents people from getting the appropriate interventions. Pans and pandas can be autoimmune diseases and need to be addressed as such. Treating it can give someone their quality of life back and may prevent them from developing more severe issues as well. There are many people out there who have pans or pandas and may not know it, or they know it but they haven't had access to the correct diagnosis because seeing specialists can be very, very expensive. Here in the UK, there aren't many NHS doctors who specialise in pans or pandas, so if there's not one in your local area and you can't afford to see a private specialist, you just might not get diagnosed. And it shouldn't be like that. Things will change, but it takes time and awareness. Please know that if you have had experiences that seem like pans pandas and you think that you have it, then you are completely valid and I'm sorry that you did not get the formal diagnosis. It may still be possible to get a formal diagnosis, but if you can't, then know that you are valid and I understand and there are sadly so many people in the same situation. Getting a diagnosis can definitely be worth it as it allows you to sometimes get the correct interventions, though not always, because there is still so much misunderstanding about the conditions amongst doctors, they may not give you the correct treatment, but at least having an idea of what's going on, that this is infection-induced inflammation, can give you an idea at least of how to manage it. The advice I would give to someone who thinks that they may have pans or pandas is to see a specialist, if you can. If you don't know how to afford to see a specialist, because most in the UK are private, then fundraising may be an option. If you're in the US and insurance doesn't cover treatment, then fundraising may also be an option for you. People do care and there will be people there to help you. There is no one test that can say for certainty that someone has pans or pandas, but some that are used are tests for infections to see if the triggering infection can be detected. 
So to be diagnosed with PANS, you actually don't need an infection identified. But for PANDAS, you do need a strict cochlear infection identified. The Cunningham panel is also sometimes used. That's a test that can detect antibodies that may be attacking receptors and cells in the basal ganglia. Ruling out other forms of autoimmune encephalitis can also be helpful, as there are other forms of autoimmune encephalitis, like limbic encephalitis, that may sometimes resemble pans and pandas, so it can't hurt to get things checked out. Do be careful if you're a parent for FII allegations. There is so much misunderstanding about pans and pandas that some people do get accused of fabricated and induced illness when that is not the case, and the accusations are way too common. So just try to see a specialist as soon as possible rather than going to so many different doctors because sadly going to many different doctors raises suspicions. Go to a specialist as soon as you can, if you can. Just try your best and advocate for your child. Advocate for yourself.